Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Surfer's Journey. In today's episode, I'm going to have a look at what is the secret to surfing small waves. How can we have more fun when we're surfing those small average days? It's something that we all have to deal with and a lot of us don't actually look forward to those smaller average days, but you should. And I'm going to show you how and why we need to do that. And guys, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe now so you can stay up to date with all my latest videos and tutorials. But for now, let's get into today's lesson of the week. So the first point that I want to discuss is that you should make a decision on what kind of surfing you actually want to do when you're out in the small waves. Do you want to just surf a longer board and cruise and have a good time? Or would you rather be on something shorter that you can push a little bit harder? Once you've made that decision, choose the appropriate board and get out into the surf. I'm going to start breaking down option A, which is surfing a longer board in a cruisier fashion. So once you've progressed, from that waist deep water and now you're out the back catching waves like this, the next step is to decide where do we go from here. At this point in time I'm assuming that you can go straight or right along the wave like this. And this is a good place to be. Surfing small waves like this is still fun and you're still up and riding a wave in the elements out in the sun. Eventually, you're going to want to start to progress your surfing. To do this, we need to start making changes in direction like this. So we're going to start moving our weight onto our toes or onto our heels, depending on which way you actually want to turn. And we also look and point to where we want to go. Being able to sit on your board comfortably is a very important skill. It allows you to do things like this to get over waves and it also allows you to make fast changes of direction if you see a wave coming and you want to catch it like this. It's worth practicing and investing your energy into and you'll find that this will also translate to a smaller surfboard. When we take off on a wave it's really important that we take off in the right spot. So you want to make sure that you maneuver yourself into the best spot possible on the wave and we'll get to where that is a little bit later on. And now that you're comfortable making those small changes in direction, now we want to start making them bigger and longer. So we want to draw out those turns by keeping the weight on our toes or heels for longer. We keep looking, we keep pointing and we keep leaning to extend our maneuvers. And as you get more confident with that, you want to start doing it faster and harder. So we look faster, we turn harder, we lean harder, and we want to make that happen faster. And that's how we make our maneuvers look better. I mentioned before that positioning was really important in regards to where we take off on a wave, but positioning where we actually perform our maneuvers is equally as important. Look at this wave as an example. As I take off, I'm going to do a bottom turn so that I perform my maneuver on the top of the wave. Performing your maneuvers high in a wave looks better, it will throw more spray and it's where the most critical part of the wave is. You don't have to worry too much about that at this stage, but as you start to progress, it will become more and more important. Surfing longer boards and smaller waves is a great combination. It makes paddling and catching waves really easy. But there might come a point where you find that those maneuvers that you're practicing are limited because of the board's lack of maneuverability. And this is where you might decide to transition to an appropriate small wave board. Now there are many small wave boards on the market and I suggest that you do your homework on a whole bunch of them to find which one will suit you. 
Surfing small wave boards like this are much more maneuverable in and off the wave. They allow you to duck dive, so trying to negotiate the waves becomes a lot easier. But the biggest benefit is their maneuverability once you're actually on the wave face. And this increased sensitivity and maneuverability will allow you to perform different maneuvers now. I mentioned before that where we take off on a wave is really important, especially on small waves. So when we're looking at an oncoming wave, what we're looking for is that steep part of the wave. We want to take off on the peak. We don't want to take off too far either side of that because we're going to miss the best sections on the wave. By taking off on the peak, it puts me into a position where I can maximize those critical sections of the wave. I'm going to have the most speed and the most power and it's going to mean that my maneuvers that follow are much better. Speed is a key ingredient in small waves. So when we're approached with a fat section like this, we want to make sure that we choose the best section to turn on. You can see that this section here was steeper than this one and that's going to give me more speed and power as I start to put my board on rail and turn through it. And when I do a roundhouse cutback, we want to make sure that we hit the foam as high as we can. The reason for that is that it's going to look better but it's also going to give us more speed as we come out of it. And as I mentioned earlier, we want to perform our maneuvers high and tight on a wave, high on the lip and close to the power source, which is that white water initial breaking part of the wave. This is another example of positioning and I'm looking for the best spot to take off on and quite clearly we can see this section here. This is the steeper section of the wave and it's the peak and it's where I want to position myself to take off on the wave. As I've said, when we surf small waves, you want to stay close to the pocket, close to the power source. That means that we're going to maximize our speed for the duration of that wave. And when we're approached by oncoming sections like this, we always want to try and go over it, whether it's a floater or a re-entry. When you're looking at selecting a small wave board, remember that going for a little bit more volume than your normal short board is always a good idea. It will help improve the board's paddling ability, but it will also help give you more speed when you're up and riding on a wave. Thanks for watching the video today. I hope that now you can understand why surfboard selection is so critical when it comes to surfing small waves. And the attitude that you have when you go out and surf those small waves is equally as important. By surfing small average waves, we're getting the opportunity to practice and that's the most important thing. The more hours you can have in the water equals more improvement at a faster rate. Remember to like the video and comment below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Thanks guys, catch you in the water. The surfer's journey now has a range of apparel available from beanies to t-shirts to hats and coffee cups. For more information on how you can place your order, email thesurfersjourney at gmail.com.